Hey guys, welcome to video number 14 in my Python series. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to write an if statement, which will allow you to make your program behave differently depending on certain criteria. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so here I am editing a file called input underscore new dot py. And I'm starting my script just the same way as I always do with that hash bang there at the top. And I'm gonna start with a simple example. I need a variable. So what I'm gonna do is call mine number and I'm going to set it equal to five. And now what I wanna do is create an if statement to do something different depending on what number is equal. Since we're hard coding the number here, we obviously don't have a choice, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to incorporate user input into this later. But for right now, we're gonna go ahead and start the if statement. So we start by typing if, and then the name of the variable we are checking. In this case, we only have the one, so we're gonna check number, and we're gonna see if it's less than 10, which we already know that it is, but this will just show you the example. So that's basically how we start an if statement. We just type the keyword if, we have a variable, and then we're doing some kind of comparison operation there. And what I'm gonna do is go on to a new line. I'm going to indent four spaces, as is the standard for Python. And I'm gonna go ahead and print the number is less than 10, which we already know that it is, but we just wanna go ahead and see this in action. And then I'm gonna go ahead and print another statement right here. So I'm gonna do the write this will always print. I'll save the file and let's run it. And we can see exactly what's happening here. It's just basically telling us the number is less than 10, this will always print, which is exactly what I'm assuming you thought would happen because this is a very simple example. We're setting the number to five. So of course it's always going to be less than 10. So this will always print. Now, if I was to go ahead and set this to say 50, then of course that statement is not going to print. And that's the purpose of an if statement. Sometimes we want the program to do something different depending on some kind of criteria. In this case, we only want this to print if the number is less than 10. But right here, this line or this statement right here is not indented at all. So it's not part of the if statement. This will always print. So now what I'm gonna do is convert this to being a little bit more interactive. I'm going to ask the user to enter a number and then I'm going to compare whether or not it is less than 10. So to do that, instead of setting the number to five, I'm actually gonna set it equal to input. And then I'm going to ask the user to enter a number so what I'm basically going to do is use the input function to prompt the user to enter a number. I'm gonna store whatever they enter into the number variable right here. And then I'm going to do a comparison operation to execute a print statement if the number is less than 10, which of course this will fail. And I think you already know why. Go ahead and run it. See if you can guess why. And what we can see here is we can't compare a string and an integer. So the solution to that is actually pretty easy. All we have to do right here is just use the integer function to convert number into integer, and then go ahead and compare that with 10, and that should solve the problem. So let's go ahead and see. and we can see that it is actually working. So that number is obviously higher than 10, so I'll enter three, and we can see that the print statement inside the if statement then executed. Now, of course, there's additional comparisons that we can do here as well. So for example, I can ask the user to enter a number between one and 10. And then I can go ahead and change my if statement a little bit right here. And so now what I can do is type the if statement such that it checks if it's less than or equal to 10, and then it's going to print a valid number was entered. So basically, I'm going to compare whether or not the value is 10 or less than that, and that means that the user followed directions and actually entered the number appropriately and didn't enter something higher than 10. So let's just go ahead and check this out and run it and see what happens. 
So I'll go ahead and run it and I'll enter 10 and it prints a valid number was entered. But if I was to run it again and type say 99, then that statement actually doesn't print. But that's not really a good way to handle this type of situation because it's only going to print if the number is less than or equal to 10. We probably want to check multiple things or maybe even have multiple different statements execute depending on more granular criteria than just one comparison. So let's go ahead and expand on this a little bit more so we can get a better feel with how we deal with different situations. So we have our basic check right here, but we want more than one branch generally. Just having one if statement isn't always going to handle what we want to accomplish in the program. Right now, all it's doing is it's just checking whether a valid number was entered, but it's only going to print that statement if a valid number was entered and won't do anything if an invalid number was entered. So how do we do that? Let's go ahead and add an else statement and I'll show you an additional layer that we could add here to the program. So I'll add a different, another line right here. I'll do else and then simply print an invalid number was entered. And that's simple enough. So let's go ahead and run it and just see what happens. All right, so enter a number between one and 10. I'm gonna enter five. A valid number was entered. So let's go ahead and enter something that is outside those bounds. So I'll type 15. An invalid number was entered. So let's go ahead and check the program and see why that actually works. So basically first it's going to check whether or not the number is less than or equal to 10. And if this statement doesn't match, it's actually going to execute this one right here. And then it's going to print an invalid number was entered, which would mean that the user entered something other than one in 10. Now this is not going to catch a situation when the user enters some text. So for example, let's go ahead and run it again. And I'm gonna type my name. And we of course get an exception because that wasn't what we were asking for. So the reason why I showed you guys that is just to underscore the fact that this is not error checking. We can do some simple checks to see if the user has done something obviously not what we expected, but it wouldn't constitute an actual um, error handling routine, which we haven't gotten into just yet. All right, so I went ahead and rewrote this program to show you an additional aspect of the if statement. And what I did was I just changed the variable from number to being a variable called age, and then I just changed the verbiage to enter your age right here, and then I basically changed the checks right here. So basically what we're doing, as you already know, is we're capturing an age variable based on user input, and then we're gonna do a comparison. So you already know how an if statement works at this point. This time we're checking to see whether or not the entered number is greater than or equal to 50. And if it is, we are basically going to print you are 50 or older. Now, what we're also going to check is whether or not the number entered is greater than or equal to 18. And if none of that pans out, which means it must at least be under 18, then we simply print you are not even an adult. So let's go ahead and run this. So I'll save the file. Enter your age, I'll enter five and it says you are not even an adult. And this statement says this will always print, which of course we know will always happen because this is not indented, so it's not considered part of any of the, uh, any of the if statement here in this section. Go ahead and run it again. And this time I'm going to type 30. It says you are an adult. And I'll go ahead and run it again, and this time I'll do 50 and it says you are 50 or older. So why does that work? Let's go ahead and, and take another quick look at this. So basically, again, as you know, we're capturing user input and the comparison works like this. If this if statement does check out, then that means the program's over, or at least the if statement is older. There's no reason for it to do anything else. It catches the first thing, it matches, the number's 50 or greater, the other instructions here do not execute. But if you enter something that's not greater than or equal to 50, then this part of the if statement doesn't pass. Then it simply moves on to else if or E-L-I-F. The if statement didn't pan out. Let's go ahead and do this check right here and see if the number is greater than or equal to 18. If it is, then it prints you are an adult. 
Now, if this also doesn't check out, then it ends with else. It basically says you are not even an adult because the lower number that is checking is 18. So if you don't even reach this statement right here, then clearly the number doesn't constitute an adult. So it just basically fails out and um, ends with this right here. Now this doesn't give you any error checking. So if you were to, for example, run this script and put in your name or something like that, then obviously it's going to give you an error. We'll get into error handling later on in the series. So we're not checking for that right now, but I wanted to show you how the different branches work with an else statement and also else if as well. So to expand on this, I'm gonna go ahead and create another else if statement right here. So I'll just put it here right after the if statement, else if int age, greater than or equal to 25 for spaces, and then I'll print you are 25 or older. Save the file, and let's go ahead and run it. So I'll go ahead and just type a random number. I'll do 45. It says you are 25 or older. Let's run it again. I'll type 10, just make sure that works. You are not even an adult. And then I'll type 18. You are an adult. And then I'll type 67 and it says you are 50 or older. So you can see the value already of else if I can add any number of these that I want. What I can't do is add multiple else statements. So I can't have more than just one else statement right here, but if I need more than one, I can actually in between if and else, I can have the else if statement right here to check for additional things. Now, you'll probably notice that I started with the highest number and worked my way down. So what happened what will happen if I was to go ahead and change this? So let's just say, for example, I'm going to change this to 18. Now I'll change this to 18. And then I'll change this to 25. And I'll say, you are 25 or older. And let's just go ahead and run that and see what happens. I'll just type in a number here. You are 50 or older. I'll type in another one. It says you are 18 or older, and I'll type in, let's just say 45. And it also says you are 18 or older. Well, wait a minute. I went ahead and checked to see whether the user is 25 or older, but it only printed 18. And that's because this is the first else if right here that triggered when I enter a number that's higher than 18, and then it's also 25 or higher it still meets the criteria for this one. So nothing else here will execute. So that's one of the reasons why I did it that way, but also to show you that the first thing in the if statement that's valid is going to be the winner and the one that executes, even if additional if or else if statements actually also match. So just something to keep in mind. Now, as we go along in Python, we're going to be using if statements more. So there's def definitely more to learn about if statements and branching, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys had that understanding. So go ahead and practice with if statements, make sure you understand that, and then we'll go ahead and move on to the next video, which should already be uploaded. See you there. Thank you so much for watching my video, guys. I really appreciate it. And if you wanna help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the show notes below this video, where I have a link to my Patreon page, as well as an Amazon store, where I have a listing of hardware that I've personally tested myself to be compatible with Linux. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. And I look forward to making more videos for you guys very soon. Thanks again.